we are going to cook bone broth. This is the $7 Botox. Bone broth is amazing for your gut, your skin, your bones, literally everything. If you've got a problem, I can guarantee you that bone broth is going to fix it. And if you've got wrinkles, bone broth is going to help. If you have cellulite, bone broth is going to help. If you have arthritis, bone broth is going to help. If you have any leaky gut, anything like that, IBS, Crohn's, any digestive issues, bone broth is going to help. Now, the ones that you get from the supermarket like these, so there's a couple different varieties you can get from the supermarket, which I like to use in soups when I don't have um, any of my homemade bone broth on stock. They are a little more expensive. Um, this is a good, really good company, um, Broth Bliss. There's another one called The Stock Merchant um, and a couple others which I will link below. These guys, Pacific, okay, if you get their big, like normal size ones, they have cane sugar in them. So you don't want to get their normal size ones. But for some reasons, they're little mini ones, which are really good for when you're just like sauteing veggies and like the garlic and stuff gets stuck to the pan. These little ones have got nothing bad in them, so they're a good option, but don't buy the big ones because they have sugar in them. Weird, I know. Broth of Life is an awesome company which you can buy their dehydrated bone broth online. So this is a refiller pack thing, so I'm just refilling my jars. But you can buy it in jars and you basically just add water to the bone broth and this is then super handy and it's actually a much cheaper option than buying like a whole pile of these and you can stick the bone dehydrated bone broth then in literally everything. I stick it in like sauteed mushrooms or kale. So that's that. But today I want to show you how to make your own homemade bone broth because there is nothing as good as homemade bone broth and this stuff you can drink like you drink tea. It is amazing. You know like chicken noodle soup and it's just like the broth? This is what it tastes like. It almost tastes like there's MSG in there. Not joking. So it tastes pretty damn good. Um, a big shout out to my favorite place in the world is Springbone in New York. They have the best tasting broth ever and they sort of started my whole like obsession with bone broth so if you ever go to new york make sure you go to Springbone. another great place is brodo a amazing amazing bone broth there too and um they definitely were my inspiration to get the bone broth cooking when i returned from my last trip in new york so um, this bone broth I like to drink straight. Sometimes I'll put it in soup, but um, because I've gone to the very little effort of making it, I tend to just drink it straight and then use these bought ones um, in soup. Another really good company actually. If you want to drink your bone broth like this, like you'll be drinking this bone broth um, and you don't have any made at home, Good Bones is balls. Their broth tastes incredible so and I drink it straight so they're another really good brand which you can find in like selected supermarkets um, in the fridge section and they have nothing bad on them and they taste incredible so and I love supporting the little guys so get them if you um, didn't have 10 seconds to make your own bone broth but now I'm going to show you how to make your own bone broth and it takes less than five minutes so the first thing you're going to want to do is either keep any carcasses from a roast chicken or go to your butcher and ask for chicken carcasses. They need to be organic or free range. Sometimes um, organic companies, they can't, it's so expensive to say organic. So they just say free range and that's generally still okay as long as they don't use antibiotics or any chlorine in their um, cleaning up the chicken. I like cannings because I trust them, although they do use vegetable oil in some of their um, pre-made stuff, so be careful. Okay. So, chicken carcasses, these are frozen. They've been thawing for a bit, but I can't break them apart. Just, they're raw, so raw chicken carcasses. I'm just gonna stick them in this um, oven-proof dish, and I'm gonna put it in the oven at 200 for about 10 minutes, and just go do something else while, you can't really burn them, so just go do something else while you're waiting. Okay, and in the meantime, I'm gonna show you the other veggies that you can prep while that's in the oven. So, in here, this is my slow cooker, by the way. It's much easier to do it in a slow cooker. I put my slow cooker outside to cook so it doesn't stink the house out like it's a giant soup factory. You can do it on the stove, but then it means that if you're leaving the house, you have to leave the stove on and it can get a little bit tricky. So I like the slow cooker. So 
So I've just thrown in, you can literally throw in any veggies you want, but I try and always use organic in here just because they're sitting in the water for so long. You really don't want the chemicals in there. So try and use organic for these. Other things doesn't matter as much, but for this, use organic. So two carrots, these were like kind of getting a bit sad in the back of the fridge. Didn't matter, threw them in. There was a bit of mold on one end, so I just chucked that, I just cut that off. Um, threw, I've got that thrown in here. I've got two um, garlic things and I've literally just cut them in half. See that all I've done is just cut it in half, super easy, just so that the garlic can come out a little bit better. Also added one red onion, red or brown, doesn't matter. I've just cut it in half. You don't even need to cut it in half if you don't want, but there you go, cut it in half. I've got a sad celery stick, which I've cut in half. I've got four bay leaves thrown in there. And then I just tossed in some oregano. And then you also need to add a splash of apple cider vinegar. Make sure it has the mother in it. So a splash of this, just about like a cap full. The apple cider vinegar helps the bones to break down and that's really important because then it, extract, it extracts the collagen and the gelatin and all the goodness from the bones and the bone marrow and stuff. So that's really important. And then I added about six um, whole black peppercorns. They're not organic. Look, you win some, you lose some, don't you? So whole black peppercorns. And then I've got, and then I threw some rosemary in and some oregano, but there's none left because I threw it in. The full recipe is on my blog and I will post the link below to that. It literally takes no time. I'm going to throw it all in. And then I'm also going to add um, about two liters of filtered water. This takes the longest because I have to wait for my fridge to like do its stuff. Okie dokie and oh, it's sizzling. And this is the chicken carcasses cooked. Chicken carcasses into the slow cooker with all the goodies that I showed you before. Boom, so there's two chicken carcasses. And then I'm going to, this is all filtered water. It took me about five hours to get it out of the fridge. Um, and I'm just gonna pour it straight in. So you want the carcasses to be covered. So that has only filled half of my slow cooker, so I'm gonna fill it up again and then treat. Okay, so as you can now see, that is as full as you want your slow cooker. So you want the bones to be covered, and now I'm gonna put it outside and plug it in for 24 hours. And I'm popping it on low sun for, mine only goes up to 20 hours. So it will be on low for 20. And then I come back out, turn it off, turn it back on for another four hours. Once your bone broth has finished cooking, you are just going to, oh, do you see how easily the bones fall apart? That is what you want. If they're not falling apart like that, you haven't cooked it for long enough. That's what extracts, that's what, ensures that all the marrow and all the minerals from the bones have come out. So you're just gonna chuck the bones in the bin because you seriously can't do anything more with this. Like, it's gone. <laughs> the chicken is no longer with us. All right, so once you get most of the bones out, if the little ones don't matter, pop a strainer like this over a bowl and just let it rest there. Then we're gonna get our hands dirty. So just pour the broth straight into the strainer. You might need to get two bowls. There we go. And now all you have to do is let these sit in the fridge overnight and solidify. So you're gonna get like a hard layer of fat over the top, depending how much fat was in the chicken will depend how much fat's on the top. This batch isn't very fatty, 
so I probably won't have to scrape any fat off. But if you let it sit in the kitchen and solidify, you're gonna get a layer of fat. And then all you gotta do is get a spoon and just scrape that layer off. Or you can cook with it, it doesn't matter. Either way, the fat is really, really good for you. I prefer to just not have the fat in it purely because it becomes really filling. And then it's like a meal. And I actually just prefer to have bone broth as a drink, so I don't want it to be really, really filling like a meal, hence I take the fat off. Okie dokie, so I'm just going to add a couple of spoonfuls for a drink into my saucepan. I'll turn that on to simmer. And then I'm going to add I'm going to show you guys how much salt I'm adding. So I'm adding about that much salt into here. And now I'm just going to pour it straight. Oops, it's spilling everywhere. Good one. Straight in my cup. And enjoy.